Hey, 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 you guys. Ross and here in Singapore. And thank you so much for joining me on the Night Owl podcast. You guys, I have food on the brain. I can't help it right now. Um, I'm kind of hungry. It's the middle of the night. It's about one o'clock in the morning. But I have been thinking a lot about food lately because I have a couple of guests that have been uh, dropping by consistently because we have a project we're working on. And every time I cook for them, the food comes out differently. So I have this fear that I will poison people. I'm afraid that I will undercook stuff. But for the most part, right, when I'm in the zone and I don't have to worry about what to cook or why to cook it, I'm just cooking for myself, the food turns out fantastically. A lot of times if I don't have any input from anybody else, I can trust my own judgments and the food turns out really well. But even still, to get to that place where I trust my judgment, I had to make a lot of mistakes. So for me, finding the perfect recipe was a real big trial and error thing. So it depended on my skill set, right? And it depended on my taste buds and what I consider tasty and not, whether I like the amount of, you know, spiciness or the depth of flavor, um, mixing flavors together sometimes. I didn't know how to do any of those things until I started mucking around in the kitchen. So what started off as watching my grandmother uh, cook when I was very young, um, to watching my mother cook as I was growing up and then eventually running my own household, I did a lot of trial and error. And where you don't want to be doing trial and error is when you're making food, but there's no choice. You kind of have to figure out what your flavors are, what your signature is, how are you able to cook based on the skill sets that you have. And if you need to create a skill or develop a skill, you need to go ahead and do that. But you don't know until you try a recipe. So for those of you who've heard me talk about it before, I have a Pinterest account and it has a couple, I don't know, a couple dozen boards on it. And a couple of them, a few of them are actually food. So I have one for snacks and I have one for breakfast and I have one for lunch and I have one for packed lunches, kind of like bento situation. And then I have one for dinners and I have one for desserts and I have one for cold drinks. Like I got plenty, right? So the point is though, I have this fetish for food and I love to collect recipes of ideas of foods that I would might, might want to try sometime. But that doesn't mean I've tried them all. Eventually what will happen is I will go through the list of ingredients and I'll see if the ingredients sound good to me, like the combination in my mind feels like it might be tasty or whatever, and then I go through the list of instructions. But that isn't to say that I'm not taking someone else's hard work to figure out a recipe and then I'm tweaking it to my own satisfaction. One case in point, right, is I make a mean spaghetti bolognese from scratch. I love the sauce. It is so hearty and so filling and so warming, right? It's perfect for one of those fall nights or whatever where you just sprinkle some Parmesan on top of the spaghetti and you have the bolognese there. But the recipe that I took it from is a slow cooker recipe and it calls for certain ingredients that I don't really like the taste of. So the first time I made it, I made it exactly as the recipe called for. And I realized that with the addition of carrots into this bolognese sauce, the sauce ended up really sweet. And I don't like sweet sauces. I don't want meat to taste sweet unless it's like a, uh, like an Asian dish. Like for example, char siu is supposed to be a little bit sweet, but it has like a, a salt to it that kind of balances that. So it works out fine. But I don't like pasta sauces that are sweet, that kind of like, it's weird for me. I don't, I don't enjoy it. So the next time I made the recipe, I omitted the the carrots to see if it would change any of the flavor. The profile was completely different and it ended up being a better sauce to me, in my opinion. And of course, my, my daughter and my, my brother are now addicted to that particular sauce. But this is the thing with food. I get a chance to experiment and figure out what works and what doesn't work. Originally, I will start with a recipe and I will make it as close to the recipe as I possibly can, unless of course I'm missing some ingredients or they're hard to find in the country I happen to be in. And then I try to make it work with the ingredients that I have. And if I have a tweak along the way so that the flavor comes out the way I want it to, I do that. But that means there is no pretense. There is no management of expectations anywhere. I just want to make a good meal. And I don't know how many millions of times I would have made a recipe and it didn't turn out well. And either it was so bad that we had to throw it away or we kind of, you know, fudged it a little bit and we we ate anyway. We, we managed to make it work. But I want to draw an analogy between experimenting in the kitchen, right, and experimenting in a lab and eventually experimenting in life. Now, I had a conversation with somebody and they were very worried about the fact that they might be making mistakes. They don't want to make a mistake because if it's a mistake, then I mean, I wasted time, right? And I wanted to stop her right there. and be like, no, 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 no. None of that is wasted. Please listen for a second. It's not wasted. If in the kitchen, you try different combinations of meat, cheese, and bread, you find what works best for you and you 
begin to eat that, right? Until you get tired of it and you try something else. In an experiment, in a lab setting, right, you have a goal in mind first, and it's not necessarily a flavor. It could be, you know, to, let's go crazy, to turn a household item into gold, right? Alchemy. So you're trying to turn lead into gold, which is something people have experimented with forever, and I don't think anyone's really figured that out yet that I know of. Um, but that means you have this idea of what the properties of gold are, and you have the properties of the beginning substance, which in this case is lead, and then you try really hard to change, adjust the properties as, as you go through this experiment, which means you would have gone through so many different types or combinations or whatever to figure out how to get to that end result. It's almost like um, the light bulb analogy. He found out a thousand ways how not to make a light bulb. Now the question is, is that wasted time? Is that you know, something that he could have skipped over. No, because if he hadn't tried all of those combinations, he would have figured out the, f the perfect combination of filament for the light bulb to actually work. He needed all of those thousand beforehand before he got to that winning um, formula, right? And so it is with love and life as well. You don't know what the perfect job for you is until you try a bunch of jobs and they're kind of crap and there are aspects of it you don't like and aspects you do. You pick up a couple of skills and you keep on going. You don't know who the perfect guy for you is until you be yourself in front of them first. I don't know how many of you do that, right? Most of you put your best foot forward. You try and come up with this grand, you know, first impression. You try really hard to impress them because you want the second date or whatever. And eventually you start losing your voice because you're not exercising the right to say something when something goes wrong. You're not speaking your mind. You're not stepping up to the plate and being yourself in any of those moments. And eventually you're like, oh my God, failed fail relationship, but I did everything right. You may have done everything right according to what they wanted, but you didn't do everything right according to what you wanted. And that's where half the problem is. So when it comes to experimenting in life and in love, you have to start with the outcome in mind. You have to know what it is that you want. But how do you know what you want? I want love. That's a very, very vague concept. What does love mean to you? That's more specific. What love languages do you need? What needs do you need filled which is most important to you, right? What things make you feel safe versus what things make you feel uncomfortable? What things are you comfortable talking about? What subjects do you not know anything about that you probably need to read, about, read up on a little bit or let the other person teach you? You need to know all of these things. How good are you with money? What do you think about personal space? How do you feel about gender roles in a relationship? What about going out? What is a good date to you? What is the definition of a good time? These are all things you need to know for yourself, but how do you know if you've never had them? How do I know if I like snails if I've never tried snails? How do I know if crocodile tastes just like chicken if I haven't tried crocodile, right? So when you think about fluid ideas such as what is a successful life versus what is a great relationship, that's a very personal thing to you. You can't take society's norms. You can't take what the culture has told you is successful or the culture has told you is a good marriage because they look at the stars. The stars are one tiny piece of this puzzle that is a human being. You have to take into consideration nature and nurture and all of the traumas that they've been through that they speak of and the ones that they don't. The skeletons in their closet, right? All of those things fold into this human being and what makes them them. How do they treat a bathroom? How do they use the toothpaste? Is that something that would bother you? Are they the kind of people that, you know, tend to wash the entire shower area? Like the whole bathroom is wet by the time they come out? Or are they pretty neat and clean and they're very picky about, you know, where they leave their clothes and how they, you know, dry their towels and stuff? Like, who are these people? And do they know themselves enough to be able to teach you? Are they willing to be vulnerable enough to let you in and see who they actually are? All of this matters. But like that thousand, you know, ways not to make a light bulb and the hundreds of recipes you've tried to find the perfect one for cookies, your kind of cookies or your kind of bolognese sauce, right? Are all of those recipes before the one you found a waste? Are all the ways you tried to find love a waste? Or did you learn more about yourself? Did you learn more about what you like or what you don't like? What does success feel to you? When do you feel successful? When do you feel like you can celebrate yourself? When do you feel like you're a badass? 
all of those things matter and they come from you specifically. They have to come from how you feel about yourself. What do you know about yourself? And unfortunately, it's the tough times and the mistakes that you learn the most. So I want to ask you guys, how many mistakes have you made in your life? Do you still tell yourself that you're a failure because you made mistakes? Or do you feel pretty damn accomplished because you learned what doesn't work for you? What you don't prefer? What doesn't feel good to you? All of that matters, you guys. All of that comes into the creation of this great and spectacular life. All of this is usable information. So I don't want you to ever think that you are a waste. I don't want you to ever think that you're not enough. You're still discovering yourself. This is a lifelong journey. This is a marathon, not a sprint. There's a lot for you to learn. And every step of the way, like every phase of your life, you will be a little bit different because you've learned, you've grown, you've expanded beyond your previous, you know, limitations. So give yourself a break. Stop worrying what people will think of you. Stop putting an age limit on when you need to accomplish things by. You're limiting yourself. Don't limit yourself. Allow things to come as they are. Allow yourself to learn from every mistake. Because let's face it, if you're going to judge people on, or judge yourself by the fact that, you know, you got a degree and you got married and you had children and then you ended up divorced and the divorce kind of invalidates everything you've done before because you did everything on time and according to a plan before, then your benchmark for failure is me. I did everything I thought I was supposed to do. I got a bachelor's degree, I got a master's degree, I got certifications, I got really, really great jobs, and I met a man, and I thought I was in love, and I married him, and I raised his children, and then I had my own child, and I raised her, and you know what? It didn't work. Eventually, I realized that I had the threshold for pain, and there could have been a lot of discomfort and stress avoided, but I was not strong enough to speak up when I should have, and so it broke. And I filtered him out too late. Well, okay, not too late. Later than I should have. But the fact is I did filter him out and he was not a good match for me. And I realized that my peace of mind was more important than being in a relationship. Having that title of wife. Having that title of, you know, head of marketing where I felt miserable because I wasn't being used for the skill set that I had. Or being in charge of a dorm full of girls where no one actually appreciated the work that I was trying to put in or they were trying to change the way I did things versus my girls actually appreciated what I was trying to do for them. All of these experiences built up into this person that I am today. I see pain from a mile away. I know what you might be going through because I've probably been through it myself in one version or another. And I want you guys not to have to struggle as hard as I did. I don't want you to learn so late what I learned late. If I'm here and I'm in a position to be able to teach you a little bit of something so you can avoid some unnecessary heartache, why not? Right? So, rather than worry about what is a wasted life, are you enough Are you wasting your time trying so many different things? Think of it like this. If you would take the time to experiment and find your favorite food, I mean, you'd have to go to a lot of different restaurants to find your favorite version of chicken rice or your favorite version of chasu, right? You'd have to go to a lot of places. That means a lot of upset stomachs probably and a lot of places that kind of disappointed you because it wasn't that flavor that you had in your mind that, you know, you were looking for, you were craving. If you're willing to do that for food, If you're willing to do that in, you know, uh, an experiment, I want you to be willing to do that for your life as well. Yes, you have one life and you have a limited amount of time on this earth, but guess what? You should be focused on how much of that time you spend miserable versus how much of that time you spend learning about yourself so you know on sight what you want and what you don't want. And you feel comfortable and strong enough to speak up and articulate what you like and what you don't like, what you want and what you don't want, what you will tolerate and what you will not tolerate. That, to me, is a very, very well-spent, useful life because every decision you make going forward then is closer towards maintaining a sense of peace, maintaining a sense of comfort and safety and security. And that, that is a freaking great life. I love you guys. I hope this helped. Bye.